Nigeria Central Bank releases guidelines for opening cryptocurrency accounts. Nigeria Stablecoin to be ready for launch this February. OpenAI's GPT store to go live next week. Cellulant's CEO makes shocking exit and Copilot now available on Android and iOS. All this and many more on today's episode. I, you can call me FK, it is the 7th day of January 2024 and this is Tech News from Africa and beyond. Following the lifting of the ban on crypto last month, Nigeria's central bank has released inaugural guidelines for banks operating cryptocurrency accounts. The two most notable rules in the guidelines released are 1. Withdrawals from these accounts will only be possible by transfer or through a manager's check. This means that no cash withdrawals will be permitted on these accounts. 2. Banks are not allowed to clear third-party checks through crypto accounts and withdrawals from these accounts will be currently limited to two withdrawals per quarter. Now, I know that this might not be the perfect conditions that crypto startups, crypto traders, and just anyone working with crypto in Nigeria has been waiting for. But at this point, we're going to take anything we can. Do you remember that thing about half bread being better than bones? Yeah. At least this current CBN administration is interested in crypto. And I hope that as more trust and adoption comes for crypto in Nigeria, these laws will get further relaxed. CBN also stated that accounts open for the purpose of trading virtual or digital assets will serve only that purpose and none other. In a report on the Punch website this week, CBN said the guidelines shall apply to banks and other financial institutions under the regulatory purview of the CBN. CBN also warned that it may sanction any financial institution, its board of directors, officers and staff for failure to comply with any of the requirements in these guidelines. So currently it's looking like opening this kind of account is going to be a lot harder than what we used to experience when we are trying to open corporate accounts in those days. CBN has stated that any of these accounts opened has to follow all the rules in the regulatory guidelines that they just released. And any of those accounts must be opened by a senior management staff in the bank. But I believe if you are doing legitimate business, you should have nothing to hide. It might be a tedious process, but at the end of the day, you're going to get it done. While maintaining its ban on banks from holding or trading crypto for themselves, the Apex Bank also warned that offending banks will be prohibited from opening any such account anymore, will be given monetary penalties of not less than 2 million naira for every officer involved, and also might face risk of suspension of the bank's operating licenses. Nigeria's plan of launching a stablecoin, as announced last December 2023, is finally coming to life. According to a report by TechPoint, the Africa Stable Consortium, ASC, an alliance of financial institutions, fintech innovators and blockchain experts on Tuesday the 4th of January 2024 announced that the stablecoin is set to go live on February 27, 2024. Now for those wondering what stablecoins are, they are like cryptocurrency without the edict. Stablecoins are also digital coins but their value is pegged at the value of the country's currency. So you can expect no losses from crypto market forces. Also, expect no gains. The initial launch of the coin, the CNGN, wait, is that the name? CNGN. <laughs> How are we supposed to be pronouncing that in conversations? CNGN. What happened to something like Naira coin or Nike coin or coin Naira or whatever? C C N. <laughs> no. <laughs> so there's no other easy to pronounce name that you guys can call. It's C C. be very interesting looking at how this name is going to play into conversations going forward. The initial launch of the coin, the CNGN, is expected to be in a regulatory sandbox, meaning that the stable coin will not be immediately available to the public when it's launched this February. It is believed that the coin will help facilitate seamless cross-border payments and shorten settlement times through the use of blockchain technology. But wait, so what will now happen to eNaira? Because I remember sometime like a year ago, we spent a lot of money developing eNaira. So what would happen with, how would eNaira and this new Naira coin, because that's what I'm going to be calling it, how would they coexist? How would they coexist? Uh, I think at some point, CBN will have to come 
and clarify what the roles of these two uh, digital currencies are going to be so that we can know which one to really focus on. After it was announced last year during OpenAI's developer conference, DevDay, OpenAI's store for its GPT apps will finally be launched next week. After a delay in November, most likely due to the whole leadership drama at OpenAI, the store, obviously named GPT Store, will go live next week as confirmed in an email by OpenAI. Now, just in case you're wondering what GPT apps are, here's a brief explanation. A GPT app is a specialized AI application built on top of OpenAI's GPT model. While OpenAI has already released its API for developers to build applications on the GPT models for things like natural language, image generation, and speech synthesis, what sets GPT apps apart is that you don't need to be a programmer to develop one. You can simply create them by describing it to ChatGPT and one will be automatically generated for you. So for example, you can create an AI application that understands your company's data and can be used to train new employees. Or you can go for something personal and build an AI application that understands your free time, your work hours, your play time and can help you plan your week. While most of these apps are going to be private to you, the GPT store will give you the ability to publish these apps to the public and that store is what OpenAI is confirming that it will be launched next week. While no revenue generating or sharing strategies have been announced by OpenAI for apps on this store, the company has directed app developers to review the company's updated usage policies and GPT brand guidelines to ensure that their GPTs are compliant before they are eligible for listing in the store. So if you're a developer and you have missed the Apple Store and Google Play Store trend, here is a new store for you to jump on. I once heard of a guy that has made up to $20 million making Chrome plugins. So uh, do with that information whatever you will. After being named CEO in 2021, Akshay Grover has decided to step down from his position as CEO of one of Africa's most prominent payment companies, Cellulant. The outgoing CEO stated the need to focus on personal matters as the reason for making his exit in a report by TechCabal this week. Cellulant, which started as a ringtone selling platform, but has then evolved into the payment platform it is now with operations in Kenya, Zambia, Ghana and Botswana, has not been excluded from recent struggles experienced by tech companies as it has had to lay off 20% of its staff last year. Peter O'Toole, the company's CFO, has since been named as acting CEO and new names will be added to its leadership team in the coming months. Honestly, I can't blame anyone for having to go back and take care of things at home. Some things in life are just bigger than everyday business and making money. Copilot, Microsoft's AI assistant, which operates similar to OpenAI's ChatGPT, is now available on Android and iOS. At least, thank God we no longer have to call it Pink Chat. You see, in the sitcom Friends, even Chandler, Chandler hated his name Chandler, but you know what he hated more? Being called Pink. <laughs> thank God for that. <laughs> Since its launch on the two major mobile platforms during the holidays, the Copilot app has been downloaded over 1.5 million times, according to mobile intelligence provider data.ai. Copilot Mobile gives you the ability to use OpenAI's GPT-4 model and can help you perform tasks like drafting emails, composing stories or scripts, summarizing complex texts, creating personalized travel itineraries, writing and updating data resumes, and many more. You can also use its image creator feature, powered by DAL-E, to create stunning images for your Instagram posts, social media campaigns, brand design, and many more. But wait, oh, is this not cheating? I pay $20 every month to access GPT-4 and DALI and all the features for ChatGPT Premium. And now you can get all that for free just by downloading the app. <laughs> OpenAI better be adding some premium features to ChatGPT Premium, else I'm going to be downloading a mobile emulator on my uh, laptop very soon and I'm going to be cancelling my subscription. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our speedrun section. Tingo Boss may be looking at 45 years in prison. Embattled Tingo Group boss Odogu Banye, who is currently under investigation for fraudulent practices involving inflating the worth of his companies and thereby using it to defraud investors, could be looking at 45 years in prison. In May and June of last year alone, the 45-year-old netted $2 million from a fraudulent sale of inflated company shares. Hmm, 45-year-old man looking at 45 years in prison. <laughs> this story is just writing itself at this point. Cameroonian fintech Cori 
closes $200,000 pre-seed round. A Cameroonian fintech company, which helps customers save spare cash on their cards, has raised $200,000 in a pre-seed round to further expand its operations. In a report by TechAbao, the fund will be used to grow its network of merchants, scale its user base, and ultimately achieve product market fit, according to Magali Goz Sanga, founder of Cori. You see, we might not be doing money talk this week, but that's some funding news. 23 and Me tells its victims it's their fault that their data was breached. Under Fire Biotechnology Company 23 and Me, who is currently facing not less than 13 lawsuits from victims of its massive data breach, has decided to blame its users for the breach. Last month, 23 and Me admitted to falling prey to hackers who then made away with genetic and ancestry data of 6.9 million users nearly half of its user base. Instead of looking for a way to compensate and reassure users of the security of their data, the DNA testing and ancestry tracing company decided to play a reverse UNO card by deflecting the blame according to a letter sent to a group of victims as reported by TechCrunch. Oh my, if there was ever a book on how not to handle the data breach, I think uh, what 23 and Me is currently doing has to be chapter 1 of that book. Starlink launches satellites for 4G internet access to smartphones. This week, SpaceX launched its first direct-to-sell Starlink satellites as part of a collaboration with T-Mobile on the coverage above and beyond plan. Six satellites launched on a Falcon 9 rocket aim to provide global internet access directly to 4G smartphones without requiring modifications, essentially functioning as an in-orbit phone tower. This technology enables high-speed internet access from anywhere in the world, provided there is an active satellite signal, with a text feature expected to debut in 2024 with voice data and IoT services in 2025. And that's a wrap for our first episode in the new year. Be sure to join us next week for more tech news from Africa and beyond. I remain your bro in tech, FK. Big teams as recorded. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> Last time. Collecting the babe. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay. okay. We'll get it.